Hey folks, Jonathan here, uh, back playing with the bike, working on the front suspension on this thing, and uh, I want to show you these springs. Uh, these are the coilovers, it's off them little tiny coilovers I've got. Now this spring is so stiff I can't even begin to, to push it, so it's actually, you know, it's a pretty strong setup. But I've got a bunch of other springs I wanted to uh, look at that are the square cut, old school style. See if I get anything close, just for the heck of it. Alright, here's my spring collection. It don't look like I'm going to have anything quite that big in diameter. Uh, some of it are short. I could double them up. They're stiff. I don't know if the center hole is big enough. The only reason I'm really looking is just for the looks of it. I don't have anything to do with the strength because I'm sure that these springs are strong enough. See if I've got more of these uh, square ones here. I don't think that center hole is big enough, but it could be. If I've got two more of them, how well they would start. Mm, that's about the same size. Look like I'll probably only have one. There's another short one. Another one. This would have been good if I'd have built my own Springer setup. You know, a little different anyway. Well, that sucks. Only, uh, only three like this. And only one like that. But I guess it's all right. Got a few bearings there too. Wheel bearings. You know what, if I keep this up, I'm going to be a professional tap breaker, which I may already be. Okay, so what I've done, uh, went ahead and milled out a hole, busted the tap out, re-drilled it with uh, three eighths, and now we're going to fix it. Okay, as you can see, I got the bolt in there, I got two nuts in there, now we're going to weld this up, and hopefully our bolt will come back out and... We'll have threads in there, and uh, you know, I don't want to take the time to remake a whole triple tree because of that. Uh, I don't know what, you know, I just got through tapping this hole. I, I don't know why I'm having trouble with taps, but uh, I think they're just a daggone doll and old. It'd be nice to have some sharp ones, so I probably need to order me some. Anyway, we're going to get at this, and I'll show you more. Okay, we got it welded up. We got the bolt in it. Now we're going to machine it off. I actually took the bolt out that was in it and I put a stainless bolt back in there. So it seems to be threading in and out alright. I think we'll be fine. Okay, we've got it welded up and machined off and now we're gonna hit it with the uh not the grinder disc, probably the flapper disc and just see if we can get it looking a little better here. And I've got a little bit I need to I'll probably have to tack a little bit with the welder to try to build it up some, but 
We'll see what it looks like. Okay, folks, there it is. A couple of little tiny spots, but besides that, we're good. Threads are good. Okay. Now, we got two more holes doing the other end, and let's hope I don't break another tap. Boy, oh boy. I think I found my good tap, I think. All right. Okay, folks, late again. We'll call it a night. Uh, got my rockers on. Done a little design change, so I got a little holes weld up. Grind down. I've still got grinding to do on them. Uh, just trying to get, trying to get my travel right and everything. Uh, it's gonna be fine. I'm afraid when I'm done, it may end up being a little bit too stiff. I may have to find some softer springs. Okay, folks. Uh, following day working a little bit on this uh, front end uh, trying to get everything all the little stuff tied up and I'll try to explain something to you you know you can fabricate and you can start throwing stuff together but if you don't complete anything then when you go back you've got loads and loads and loads of work to do and uh, so what I'm trying to do and what I've spent uh, yesterday and well what time I worked on it yesterday and today doing was a uh, trying to get little things caught up you know the little holes welded up I needed welded up and re retap the holes you know up in the other end and then uh, grinding these welds and getting it good and straight and you know I V these out really well and welded them good so I'm not worried about them uh, just all this stuff like that that's what's what I'm trying to do and uh, something that I learned from a from an elderly fellow a long time ago uh, who's actually a really good friend of mine we called him Sawmill Bill, and he had a sawmill, and he had cleared land for years, and I got into clearing land years back, and I was running an old HD5 dozer, and some of you may be familiar with that. Uh, I used to lose the track at least at least once a day, working in the swamps, clearing them, so I'd have to uh, put, the, put the track back on. I'd, it had a winch on the back, so I would chain the track to the machine, and I'd drag the machine out of the woods. I mean, I was really working hard for my money. Trust me, I was working hard for it. But uh, he had come down because I had a bunch of trees I was, you know, getting out of there. And he wanted the trees, of course, for the sawmill. And, you know, I respected his opinion on clearing and stuff like that because he had done it for, you know, years and years and years before I was even born. And uh, he told me one day, he said, look, he said, when you're clearing land, you, you know, especially with an old machine like I had, you know, old slow, had a 271 Detroit, and, you know, you got your main clutch, your steering clutches, you've got to use your brakes, you know, left and right, and then you got the controls for the loader on the on the right side, and, because uh, it was a loader crawler, I keep calling it a dozer probably, but, uh, but it was a loader, but, uh, so, you know, you've got a lot of work to do, I mean, it, you know, you really need four hands to operate it, but he told me real quick, he said, look, he said, uh, I'm going to explain something to you, and if you'll, you'll listen to me, you'll, you'll get done quicker and, and make more money. So of course I was listening, and he said, uh, "When you're when you're on that machine and you go over to one corner of the property, and you start working, he said, finish everything there, work your way out of there." He said, "Don't leave that area, go do something else. You know, don't put yourself on just cutting or getting the big trees and then go back to the little ones, or or the vice versa or anything like that." He said, "Do it as you go," and I always thought about that. And so if you do something as you go, you save time in the long run because you don't have to run back to it. And this pertains to everything, and it definitely pertains to doing this fabrication work. Now, I screwed up and let some stuff build up here and that I had, uh, you know, tacked together and done this and done that for fabrication purposes so I could get things right. And now, you know, look at me, I'm, I'm behind trying to get caught up on all this little stuff. And if not, I would get the whole bike built, and then I'd still have you know, hours and hours and hours of fabrication to do to finish up, you know, whether it be welding or grinding or whatever. So anyway, I'll quit babbling on, but if you understand what I'm trying to say. But uh, what we've got here is a, this is a weld, and I'm going to show you that how I would, how I do this. You know, this is, uh, this was beat out good. This is quarter inch plate. This is uh, old used steel, you know, that I cut one of my forks out of. The, this is one of the inner forks. But I've welded it up, and now I'm going to grind it, and I'm going to try to smooth this to make it look like you can't tell there's a weld there. Now, I mean, this is this is not rocket science. Don't get me wrong. I just want to show you how I do it, 
and the way that I tackle it to try to get it right. So. All right, first things first, safety glasses. Bifocal safety glasses if you if you're like me. All right, we're going to start with a regular grinding disc. Now this is not, and no, I don't have a guard on it. Just don't tell anybody. But uh, this is a uh, coarse disc. We're going to take the main off. Try not to get into your metal too much and scratch it up. You know, you don't want to put any really deep gouges in anything. Just bring this down until it's a little bit above surface. We'll knock that out real quick. So we got that down. Let me move my cord out from underneath here. What I'm using is a four and a half inch grinder. This one is a Porter cable. Uh, I bought it the uh, probably I don't know a month ago. Uh, I haven't had good luck with these four and a half inch grinders because I seem to burn them up a lot. So uh, I usually use my big grinder, but my big grinder is kind of aggravating, heavy. I do have an air one that I use sometimes too that I really like because. It's light. So now we're going to a flapper disc, and I think this is, I think it's maybe 180 grit, something like that. All right, now we're going to switch to our hair grinder, or die grinder, side grinder, whatever you want to call it. And I've got a 120 disc on it. Now this is the sandpaper style disc. Now we're going to swap out. And I don't know what disc this is, but this is one of them, some people call them cookies. A lot of people use them clean gaskets. I'll show you what we got. Okay. It's not perfect. Now, it's really smooth. Some of these little marks in it, you know, depending on what you're going to do, if you're going to use a uh, primer or whatever, uh, you know, it's uh, a high build primer is going to cover all them little scratches. You know, we've still got to come in and I, it'll probably need to weld up a little bit right here. But we're going to grind that. And, uh, you know, you'll have to go back and weld and, and grind a little bit. But, uh, but anyway, that's uh, that's what I use. That's the quickest way to do it, get it down. Uh, now, I could keep going with it, smooth out even more, and, and you know try to get every little scratch out. But the thing is, is the the metal itself's got some scratches in it that are actually deeper than the ones I just added. So uh, anyway, just wanted to show you how I done it. You know, it's not perfect, but uh, you know you're never gonna you're never gonna see it any worse than that. Anyway. And uh, I guess, uh, well, it, it's not, I don't even think there's, there's nothing there that even you would even need filler prime, or uh, Bondo for, so, or putty, so, all right. Okay, folks, we've got all the pieces in between now. Got all of them there. Uh, now, what I'm debating on, I've still got, a, you know, a lot of cleanup little things to do, but i got to make the pieces go in between here. Now, the other ones I made out of steel, I was debating, you know, I got aluminum, I thought about making them out of aluminum, but I don't think I'm going to. I don't think we use anything machined aluminum on it. I think I'll just keep the steel a little bit heavier, but, you know, it's okay. Uh, we'll be able to nickel plates and stuff. Okay, folks, I think I'm about finished for the night. I got the front end just stuck back together. Uh, well, the, the rockers, anyway. Uh... You know, I haven't finished them. I got more work to do on them, but you get the basic idea of how they work. And I'm hoping they're not going to be too stiff because they are really, really stiff. But we'll figure that out. And uh, that's one of the reasons I moved moved them out. But plus, like I said, we're going to have enough travel for what I'm doing. I'm not. We're not jumping this bike. I can promise you that. We just need some something to dampen it. So uh, that's good. I got both my pieces made for in here. That's done. Uh, everything's drilled, tapped. So 
we're about caught up on all that and I'm gonna get back on the rockers and go ahead and get the axle made get everything keyed and get these uh, rockers cleaned up the way I want them and should be able to uh, get this front end finished up here very very soon once this is finished I can get back on the tank and uh, these bolts here will be cut off uh, but I'm not using these bolts I'm actually well, you can see one of them's already cut but I had to do that to clamp it in the vise but I'm actually using the stainless bolts so uh, no use cutting these and it's uh, it's coming along though and we're going to probably pretty soon try to figure out some handlebars you, you know everything I put on it nothing has really jumped at me let's just put it that way so uh, we'll get it figured out and I've got the engine out of it so just uh, hopefully get it but you know start getting it mounted and everything soon so uh, anyway a couple things I had a couple of people ask or at least one ask about the welder review I haven't done a welder review yet and the reason I haven't done it is I've done a lot of welding on this thin stuff I've done no heavy welding and I'm not going to do a review and give my opinion on a welder unless I know for sure it's a it's going to do what it's supposed to do and uh, you know, I, I want to do, you know, some half inch plate or something a little thicker before I, you know, go to to giving a review on it. So that'll be pretty soon. Uh, I do have the unboxing and all the, the features that it has over my old Miller. And uh, and when I say old Miller, I mean, you know, old Miller. It wasn't, uh, it was a 250. And, uh, but so far I'm very, very, very happy with it. I'm tickled to death with it. It really does a good job. But uh, like I said, I'll, I'll do a better one. And I think that's about it. I've uh, got a lot, of, a lot of things to catch up on, a lot of work to do. I've got a brand new set of control valves here for one of my rollbacks. This is actually the rollback that I built. And when I built it, I put used control valves on it. And after about a year or so using it, you know, they were leaking. And uh, they're, just, they're just wore out. I mean, it's just the bottom line. I think I've been using it for eight or nine years now. And or maybe even longer but it's just uh they're wore out so I just bought a set I mean I you know I, I wish I could have put new ones on it when I built it but the ones I got actually come from a scrap yard I went and and took them off with one so anyway I'm, I'm hoping here soon to get back on this tank I really want to get Ill on it and I just uh trying to tie up all these little loose ends and that's uh that's very very time consuming uh anytime you get into a bunch of machine work it's going to be time consuming and you know just about everything on this box either cut out and ground or machined so uh, that's the problem with not buying any aftermarket parts you know of course besides the rims uh, and you know we're just playing here so it's not a uh, it's not like we're trying to build this to to have a daily driver to go to work with so we're not you know it's not going to be a it's not going to be a trailer coin I promise you that because I mean I will ride it but it's not going to be something that I plan on riding on the road all the time but uh just something i wanted to do and something i wanted to put together so anyway appreciate everybody watching and uh, i'll have another one here on soon all right bye